Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gregorious Maths video. Today is, should be an exciting day on your calendar because today is when we're going to be looking at homeomorphisms, okay? So this is basically where you get to understand the joke about the topologist who can't tell the difference between a donut and a coffee mug, okay? And you can form your own variation of that joke, put it in the comments, I don't know. Okay, like, uh, why did the topologist drink coffee from his donut? Because he thought it was a coffee mug. <laughs> okay, anyway. So we're gonna, anyway, we're gonna be looking at homeomorphisms. Um, <clears throat> which is basically the kind of sense of topological equivalence. So two topological spaces are equivalent if they're homeomorphic to each other. <coughs> okay. So yeah, if they're homeomorphic to each other, they're equal, topologically speaking. So intuitively, it's a coffee mug and a donut are homeomorphic. I'm sure, there are tons of um, what's it called, animations, where you can just see the donut being, like, squeezed and stretched into a coffee mug. It's very satisfying stuff, okay? But today we're going to be looking at them, the, like, the theory behind homeomorphisms. So, what's the actual definition of a homeomorphism? Well, two topological spaces... are homeomorphic okay they're homeomorphic if a function f there exists f which takes you from oh sorry two topological spaces let's call them s and t for example okay are homeomorphic if there exists an f which goes from S to T, such that F is bijective, continuous, and its inverse, G, so it has a G, which goes from T to S, okay, is continuous. Okay, so it's all about this continuity between these inverse functions. So you can stretch them in one continuous motion, these two spaces into, into each other. So if we take a look at two basic examples, very, very basic examples, we have, let's say, for example, s equal to the open interval between negative 1 and 1. Also, I want to introduce the notation for two spaces being homeomorphic to each other and t being, let's say, for example, the open interval between 5 and 2, okay? If we define f of x to equal 5 over 2 times x minus 1 and g of x equal to 2 over 5x minus 1, well, we can see that this is bijective and continuous, on this interval. This is by this is continuous on this interval. These two you can check yourself are inverses of each other. Therefore, S is homeomorphic. So it's an approximately sign on top of an equals like this, homeomorphic to T. Okay? Now if we take a look at another example if we have just s equal to that open interval between negative 1 and 1, let's say I claim that this is homeomorphic, okay, to the real line, the whole real line, okay? Well, how can I prove it? Well, notice that if we define f of x to equal tangent of pi x over 2, okay, 
This is bijective and continuous on this interval, okay? And therefore it's inverse, g of x equal to 2 over pi arctangent of x. Okay, this is clearly that it's inverse. And also, um, and also continuous and bijective on the whole of R, okay? In fact, it's just continuous and it's continuous on R. It's not bijective, actually. Okay, so that was another example. So now we've gotten used to the notation and the basic idea. Why don't we quickly prove something? Okay, so let's, it's a little lemma, I guess. Okay. If uh, S is homeomorphic to T, okay, and T is homeomorphic to u, okay, this implies that s is homeomorphic to u, okay? Now, let's prove it. Okay, so the proof is as follows, okay? If f is homeom if s is homeomorphic to t, okay? and t is homeomorphic to u, and, and we're trying to prove that s is homeomorphic to u, well this means, say for example we call g, I mean sorry, f, the function which takes you from s to t, and g, the function which takes you from t to u, this means that g compose f goes from s to u. And we have to prove that this new composite function is a homeomorphism. Well, for now I'm just going to take for granted that composition, so a composite of two continuous functions is continuous, okay? It's not difficult to prove. I'm just going to take it for granted for now. This means that G compose F is continuous. And also, because they're homeomorphisms, both of them, this means that G inverse and F inverse are continuous. Okay, now all that's left to prove is that when we take, if we do g inverse compose f inverse, that, they're in, that it's an inverse to this function here. Okay, so that means that g inverse compose f inverse is continuous. Okay, so now how do we prove that that and that are <coughs> Sorry, that and that are inverses. Well, G compose F, compose G inverse, compose F inverse is equal to um, G compose F inverse, compose F, compose G. Sorry, inverse. Okay. Which is equal to well, uh, this is just equal to the our identity in S, okay? And another word, if we do uh, G compose G inverse, compose F inverse, compose f, we're going to be left with the identity in u, for example. Okay? Basically, they are inverses, and hence, we've proven this lemma. Okay? So now let's look at some more examples. A corollary of that is that any open interval in R is homeomorphic to R itself. Okay? That's a little co nice corollary of that. 
so now let's look at some let's for example if we can get the hang of things now if we look at the coffee mug and the donut if we have this hole here we have the coffee mug here we have the donut the torus with its little hole well this hole corresponds to that hole okay maybe this looks it makes it look a little bit more 3d i don't know Okay, I'll look at. I'll show you the picture from the book because why not? It's always good to have a nice picture, I'd say. So here, if we have the coffee mug and the donut, okay, you can read the explanation for yourself. Okay, so yeah. That's the actual picture. And if you want, you can pause the video uh, and read the explanation yourself. Okay? But let's not get carried away. Let's take a look at some examples of spaces which are not homeomorphic. Okay? For example, the real line and the zero sphere are not homeomorphic. Because we showed in the connectivity video that there is no continuous surjective map from R to the zero sphere. But remember that from the definition, the function has to be bijective and continuous. But we showed that it w can't be continuous and surjective. But bijective means it's surjective and injective, so hence R and the zero sphere are not continuous. Okay? If we take another look, it actually turns out, surprisingly so, that the closed interval between 0 and 1 is not homeomorphic. I'm guessing that's how you write it, because that's logical. To the open interval between 0 and 1. Okay? Because we showed that this is compact, and we showed that this isn't compact, both via the high niebuhr theorem, a very, very important theorem. Go to the compactness video if you haven't seen the proof or the statement. Okay, <clears throat> and it actually turns out that, um, yeah, there is no continuous surjective map from this to this, okay? Because, because if f is continuous, okay, and bijective, I believe, or surjective, I'm not sure, that means that this that the image of f is compact but look that's not compact and hence we can't have a continuous subjective map between them okay so this is all looking like maybe there's a pattern somewhere hmm oh i've got it yeah there is a pattern okay there is definitely a pattern so this is quite an important proposition in my opinion, okay? So if we have this proposition, okay? If, if S is connected, okay? Um, and homeomorphic to T T is connected okay so now we're seeing that homeomorphisms are like structure preserving maps okay also if S is connected oh sorry compact and homeomorphic to T. Okay, then T is compact. Okay, now I'm gonna introduce some new terminology and I'm gonna leave it to you as an exercise to prove the last part of this theorem, okay? 
again, this is for you. I'm gonna leave one exercise every video, okay? And this is the one for you. I forget who commented this, but okay. If S is Hausdorff, don't worry, I'll define it after I've written this down. S is Hausdorff. Okay. Um, and homeomorphic to T. That means T is Hausdorff. Okay. So they are structure pres preserving maps. But what does Hausdorff mean? I'm going to leave it to you to prove this last statement. Um, T is Hausdorff. Of course, T is the topological space. T is Hausdorff. Okay. If. Okay. Um, we can pick. X and Y in T such that X intersect Y is not is equal to sorry the empty set so X and Y are disjoint we have our topological space T we have X and Y their intersection is nothing okay 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 and there exist open subsets of T, U, U, and V, such that X is in U, Y is in V, and U intersect V is equal to the empty set. So, we have our open subset of T U, we have our open subset of T V, and we can see that this topological space T is definitely Hausdorff, okay? Because we picked X and Y such that open subsets of T contain X and Y respectively, but their intersection is nothing. And it turns out that pretty much all of the spaces we've met so far in this series are Hausdorff. Okay. And actually, because the one sphere is connected and the zero sphere is not, this, this little lemma pro proposition here says that the zero sphere is not homeomorphic to the one sphere. Okay. Also, um, the one sphere is not homeomorphic to the real line. A, because the one sphere is compact and R is not. Okay? There's tons of examples like this. Why? Well, in the connectivity video, we proved that they're... well sketched okay we proved in topology 1.4 okay that there exists there does not exist a continuous surjection from okay there is no continuous surjection from a con from a connected space to a disconnected space okay we sh we didn't actually show in the last video but actually it turns out that there is that if um, F is continuous, 
okay? Then the image of F is, and, and the domain is compact, the image of F is compact, okay? And I'm going to leave it to you to prove this last statement. And in fact, it is now that I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say goodbye. Okay? Keep, keep your eyes peeled. I'm hoping to do a double, maybe even a triple upload today. So that by the end of the Easter holiday, I will have a video featuring the Harry Ball Theorem.